ladies and gentlemen for uh, attending uh, Chesapeake's uh, presentation this afternoon. Just a caution, I will be making some uh, forward-looking statements. We all have reasons why you might want to own gold or, or not, and uh, every day the market reflects that bet. And I'm going to talk a little bit in my presentation about the uh, demand and, and the gold side, uh, sorry, uh, the supply side for gold. <clears throat> for the last uh, four to five years, uh, gold has been in a bear market. Uh, physical demand has been seen by Asia and India, and the central banks uh, have been uh, buyers of gold as well. What we really need to change the tide and, and see higher gold price is you have to have the generalist capital come back into the market. <clears throat> they have to see gold as a better trade or, or a return, possibly better than where their current investments are. And we've seen that flow of capital come into 2016. And on the chart here, you can see the S&P is up about 2%, gold's up about 18% since the beginning of the year, but the HUI has, has been up to into the 80% range. Since 2011, the central banks have continued to buy gold. In fact, they've been buying 20% of the annual gold production. The trend has also been reversed for ETFs. They've gone from net sellers to net buyers. And in the first uh, part of this year, ETFs have bought over 300 tons of gold. So, with gold showing up on the radar screen, who's Chesapeake? Why is Chesapeake? And uh, as I was introduced uh, here in a moment ago, uh, we own Metates, and Metates is one of the largest undeveloped gold, silver, zinc deposits in the world. Metate has over uh, 18 million ounces of gold, over half a billion ounces of silver, and four billion pounds of zinc, and these are in reserves, these are not resources. And the project is located in northwestern uh, Mexico, in Durango State, which is uh, a very pro-mining jurisdiction, even especially in Mexico. Management of the company is kind of worth noting because we have been in Mexico for over 20 years. We actually discovered a major gold deposit in the 90s. We took it to feasibility, uh, same stage where we have Metates today. I sold that company in 2002 for $400 million when gold was $300 an ounce. El Sosol is the name of the project. El Sosol was placed into production three years later and for many years was the largest gold mine in Mexico. Just quickly on the capital structure, our market cap is around $150 million. Uh, we, for an exploration development company, we're very well financed. We have uh, over $20 million cash in the bank, no debt, and management has 12% of the company, and Gold Corp owns uh, 9%. So how has Chesapeake responded with the recent interest uh, in gold? And we've actually responded quite well. We've been a good call uh, as an option on gold. We've actually, uh, since the beginning of the, uh, of the year, outperformed the GDX and the GDXJ. So this is where Metates is located. As I mentioned, Durango State, northwestern Mexico. What you're seeing outcropping here represents about the first third of the project's mine life. And that represents about 5 million ounces of gold and almost 200 million ounces of silver. The life of mine strip ratio for Metates is a low one to one. This is just a cartoon early in the mine life. I don't have time to go through it, but it's important to note that uh, we do have water here. We, we are at the headwaters of a drainage system, and uh, we, this is probably the highest and best, best practices that you can see in terms of tailings management. This is a kind of important slide. It goes to uh, projects economics and uh, relative to our peers. Most world-class uh, gold deposits are located in remote uh, terrains that don't have any uh, infrastructure. And here you'll see the process plant for Metates is within 50 kilometers of a paved highway, power grid, natural gas pipeline, and labor. Big shovel operations have big capital costs. They're basically uh, 
exercises in terms of moving earth, and they have to reach scale to make them work. Matates is unique in that its highest grade and its lowest operating cost occurs in the first eight to 10 years of its mine life. We have completed now two pre-feasibility studies on Matates, and we've demonstrated that this project is scalable and very viable, even if you start it as a small mine and let it grow to nameplate capacity, largely funded by cash flow. I won't go through these two slides, obviously in the interest of time, but essentially we did do the two studies, one starting at a 30,000 ton per day case, another at a 60,000 ton per day case. And I'll talk about the 60,000 ton per day case in a few slides here in comparison with some of the project peers. The gold world is shrinking. People talk about gold, but we're actually seeing a shrinking industry. Uh, in the last five years, this industry has shrunk by over 50%. At the end of 2015, if you looked at the large North American producers and you looked at the mine lives for the known reserves that they have, most of them have lives of less than 20 years production. And you can see on the slide here, Barrick, Gocorp, and Newmont are all around 18, 17 years. And you'll see how that relates to a comment by Goldman Sachs here last year. The large cap uh, companies are also seeing, obviously, a reduction in their gold reserves. In the last three years, their reserves have declined by 15%. And over the next three years, their production profile is also expected to fall by 8%. So to replace reserves, what choices do these big companies have? How do they find something that actually can move their production needle? And in the Americas, there's only three or four undeveloped deposits that can produce 500,000 ounces of gold annually. And these are them on the screen here. We're gonna look at uh, two of them here in comparison with Chesapeake. This is the KSM Seabridge deposit in uh, British Columbia and the Nova Gold Donlan project in Alaska. And you can see this is at the 60,000 ton, uh, ramping up to the 120,000 ton uh, case for uh, Chesapeake and Matates. Production profile, basically in the same range between five to 700,000 ounces of gold a year. But here's what we see different. Just go down a few lines, you can see uh, Chesapeake's economics are, are quite, uh, quite better here. Our net present value is higher, our internal rate of return is higher, our return of capital on investment is higher, and surprisingly, we have the lowest market capitalization. And that's really one of the reasons why Tracy asked me to speak today, is to talk about Matates and where do we sit in the scheme of these big world-class deposits. I've been on the board of directors of a senior gold company for over a decade. And I've been involved in uh, six uh, uh, mines that have been developed since I sat as a director. And I really think one of the, the big things that we've uh, underestimated and, and overlooked is the cost of social licenses to operate uh, on foreign soil and water. Uh, so. And I do think, looking forward, miners are starting to recognize these risks and that that bar has to be raised. And I think you're certainly going to see a lot more focus on uh, uh, social responsibility, uh, uh, environmental standards, tailings, uh, practices, and uh, water management. And we have really done this in the studies for uh, the Matates. Uh, we have done the highest and best practices for uh, tailings management. We do have the dry stack filter tails on the right-hand side. That project, you see the pictures there, the first gold mine in Mexico to have dry stack tailings was El Sosol. And that's El Sosol, it's now in reclamation. And you can see, you, you can stack it and then you can revegetate uh, after the mine life. Down on the bottom uh, is the water. Uh, not most places can have access to desalinated water. Obviously you gotta have salt water and be close in terms of logistics and otherwise. We are with Metates, and uh, so we can get desalinated water for the same cost as surface runoff, and you have a 30-year water supply uh, and a regulated price. So uh, we've certainly checked two critical boxes in the Metates studies. 
So just to sort of uh, conclude here, um, every day the gold mining industry is losing reserves of gold. And the producers have not been successful in replacing these reserves uh, organically through their own drill bit. So I really believe you're going to see an increase in uh, M&A activity for these companies to try to shore up some of their uh, production shortfalls and erosion of reserves. And so that's why I say when you see big world-class deposits like Metates in uh, mining favorable jurisdictions, uh, they are needed to sustain the gold industry and I think will dearly reward shareholders uh, in companies such as Chesapeake. So that's my uh, presentation. Thank you, Randy.